Welcome back. God, I wonder how many times, like, if somebody was, I, I need to really do something. Because somebody was, like, coming across YouTube and, like, oh, wow, they're talking about uh, Scarface. I'm going to tune in. And then some douchebag is, like, shrieks in their sh ears. Shrieks their in eardrums. their ears. And then, like, gives and starts blowing his mic. They're going to be like, all right, I'm, fuck these guys. I'm out. So, yeah. you know what? I think that's what's been holding us back, actually. I think the introduction. I think I'm holding us back just just in general. I, I think that's I clear think, to everyone. But I think the introduction specifically is holding us back because I think that we could be blockbuster podcast stars. I think, you know, we have around, you know, eight or nine right now. I think we could have 15, 20, 25 no. listeners. No, no, no. Who do you think I you do. are, Joe Rogan? I do. Yeah. You know Joe Rogan. <laughs> Uh, what do we call? What are we uh, talking about today, Ty? So uh, this was an idea we kicked around a while back that we would each of us bring a couple of movies that we think not enough people have seen. That uh, so we could talk about some uh, lesser known gems, and some of these might be less gem than than pleasantly shaped turd, but <laughs> but you know, <laughs> all of them will have something good about them that we can talk about that was my so, biggest struggle because i was like oh streets of fire oh eddie and the cruisers oh but then you go back and you look at those and like oh because the criteria was movies that we love that is good but i that, don't think it has to be good it just has to have or, something you love about it what well, yes it, well no well no i would say that it has to be a movie that you would recommend to somebody like you oh, yeah. need to see this movie yeah yeah like streets yeah. of fire i love that movie but it's not a good movie. And so if no. I was, t if somebody was like, what's a good movie that I doubt that, you know, I would say, uh, uh, street, I wouldn't say streets of fire because I'd be like, you're probably not going to like it. If you, if you didn't watch it when you were, uh, 10 years old, then you're probably not going to like it. You know, <laughs> all right, you kick it off. Cause, uh, I can't wait to hear yours. All right. So I've got, I've got three different categories here. I've got stuff that I love because it's fucking insane. And I think everybody should experience the insanity. I've got stuff that I love because it's actually good, and just not a lot of people got a chance to watch it, and it's unexpected. It's unexpectedly good. And then I've got stuff that's just a movie that everybody should watch, and uh, in spite of its terrible. So wait, which, which do you want me to start with? What do, you, what do you like the sound of? Like, So there's terrible, there's insane, and there's, there's good but, but uh, underappreciated. Uh, terrible. Terrible. Okay, so as a fan of 80s fantasy cheese <laughs> as we both are and i'm talking and i'm talking so there's the pinnacle which is conan the barbarian that's the peak that's as good as it gets well you right? said cheese though no no but i'm talking about this this 80s fantasy sort of version there's so no got, cheese you, in conan the, the conan is the peak yeah then you got the the Tier two stuff. You got the Beastmasters, right? Things like that, where it's like whoa, you know, it's whoa, whoa, it's, whoa, whoa. oh come on. There's no way Beastmasters at the same level as Conan. Beastmaster, no, you can have levels within tier one, but Beastmasters a tier one fantasy. A hundred percent. It's tier two. It's tier two. It's a tier one. And then and then, and then there's like and then there's like the tier three, which is the stuff that was bad ripoffs of Beastmaster. Yeah, where it's like now we're getting a photocopy of a photocopy, and it's got all kinds of weird artifacts in it. And it's terrible. And then you got Z, you, then you got Z list. This is why I love this category. Somebody had a grand vision. Somebody <laughs> said, "I am going to make the world's greatest fantasy movie," and they had no money, they had no talent, <laughs> they had no fucking clue what they were doing, but they fucking made a fantasy movie. And there's something about the joy of that that I find very appealing. So my first pick is a little-known 80s fantasy cheese called Hawk the Slayer. If you like, <laughs> if you like watching movies that is like watching somebody else play... You're all about play, some Hawk the Slayer. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you like watching a movie that's like watching somebody else play a game of D&D &D where nobody really knew how to play D&D &D and the Dungeon Master was kind of terrible, but Jack Palance shows up, then you will love Hawk the Slayer. T Hawk tell the Slayer me the story. Everything. It has giants. It has dwarves. It has evil wizards. It's got dark lords. It's got witches with magic powers. It's got uh, a warrior with a magic sword. 
It's got an elf who can machine gun a bow. It's got an old dude with a machine gun crossbow for no reason. He just has one. Like, they never explain it. He's just got a machine gun crossbow. And it is classic D&D cheese. It is, we have a quest. We've got to defeat a dark lord. We've got to gather our group of, of mighty warriors to go out and defeat him. And randomly, Jack Plants is there. And he's the dark lord. And you get, you get a dwarf who's not actually a dwarf. He's just kind of a short guy. <laughs> And you get a giant who's not actually a giant. He's just kind of tall. Is it and Gary get, Old? Is it Gary Oldman? As a dwarf? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> and then you get you get an elf who's like just a dude with like like Spock ears. They just put Spock ears on him, and so now he's an elf. You got random old guy with machine gun crossbow. Why? I don't know. I don't know where he came from, but he's got machine What's gun crossbow. What's the story? What's the story? It's basically the same story as uh, uh, Sword and Sorcerer. It is the the son of the Lord is driven off by his evil brother and has to gather, a, and, and the evil brother becomes a tyrant of the country, so the, the son who's been driven off has to gather a group of heroes so they can defeat evil Lord and free the people from his tyranny. And then some random stuff happens. And then at one point, a witch throws glowing ping pong balls at people, and Jack Plants gets half his face burned, so then he has to wear a weird helmet. and a guy gets a, a giant uh, morning star suspended over him that he has to hold the rope with his teeth. So if he lets go, the morning star will fall and smash his head. I mean, all kind of crazy shit happens. But the dwarf and the giant become friends, and it's kind of sweet. And the elf is weirdly badass in spite of the terrible visual effects that imply that he's shooting his bow fast. He's still kind of badass. Is this is this movie Hog to Slayer? Is it a movie that you actually enjoy watching, or yes. do you have fun about how bad it is? Is it like I, the Room both, of both Fantasy at the same movies? Time. It, okay. Both at the same time. I but actually room, enjoy watching, but it. the Room doesn't have any redeeming. It's just a funny movie to watch because the, the of how bad is, it is. The Room is terrible, and it's only terrible. And yeah. you're there to laugh at how terrible. Yeah, Hawk to Slayer has moments where you're like, oh, that was kind of badass. Yeah, and. And like stuff where you're like, oh, that's cool that the giant has this huge hammer and he's just wailing on people. Yeah. Um, and, and also it's kind of terrible. It's got terrible visual effects, but you know, it, they were doing the best they could with what was clearly an incredibly limited budget. Like, I think this guy made this movie with a group of his friends and they had like $73 that they spent on like catering and that was it. <laughs> yeah. And, and so the visual effects are, are super goofy. But there's there's elements of it where you're like this is kind of badass. Like if I if I went over to a friend's house and they were playing D and D and that was the adventure they were playing, I'd sit in. Seems fun. I'd do it. How, how did you discover this movie? Was it in the HBO playlist? It wasn't. So I st he's still my friend. We still hang out uh, periodically. But uh, I had a good when I was like 19. I had a really good friend um, that uh, we lived in the same town. What's he his name? The same? Huh? What's his name? Ron. Ron. You just, made Ron, you just made Ron famous. Ron. Yeah. yeah. Poor Ron. The, the eights of people will be uh, definitely <laughs> excited about He's Ron. He's going to be flooded with flooded fan mail. With eights of fan mail. But, um, <laughs> Joseph, by the way, where does our fan mail go? Do you just keep it like in a gigantic yeah. vault? Jo like Joseph I keeps it and reads it to himself because he, <laughs> he, he likes to pretend it's all about him. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. Anyway. So apparently he had seen this movie years before. Mm -hmm. And, and Bron and I would, uh, it was all about movies with us. We were, well, yeah. movies and comics. Yeah. So we would read comic books, we would watch movies and we would play Nintendo. That was it. That was basically what we did when we hung out. And he kept telling me about this fantasy movie he had seen where there was like a magic sword and he couldn't remember the name of it, but he was like, yeah, it, it, it was like really cool. And we should watch it at some point. Anyway, at some point, yeah, I guess he was at a video store or something, but he spotted the cover and he was like, that's the movie. That's the movie. And he was like, dude, the movie that I saw was called Hawk the Slayer. We got a third friend of ours. We sat down, we watched Hawk the Slayer and it was, it was glorious. It was terrible. We were laughing at awful stuff, but at the same time, we were all kind of digging it. We were all kind of into it because it was like high fantasy with magic swords and witches and stuff. So that was cool. Did it have yeah. a Kroll kind of feel to it? Was it? Would you say it's better uh, it than Kroll? If Kroll was tier two, yeah, this is like tier seven. Oh, I see. 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah Kroll, um, Kroll actually had enough money to hire Liam Neeson. Yeah. Um, this movie could not have hired Liam Neeson's jockstrap. Okay. <laughs> so if, 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 if you like your fantasy, your 80s cheesy fantasy, if you like your D&D, if you like your uh, wizards and warriors and witches and giants and dwarves and elves and all that stuff, you could do worse than to spend 80 minutes with Hawk to Slayer. I want, I want to know, I wonder how many people that are listening to this are going to go watch the movie. And then are we, are we going to, are we going to make that movie a hit now? <laughs> I think so. Because I love it too. <laughs> See? See? It's worth all your right. time, right, Joseph? Hey, should we do one for one or should we do? Yeah, I think, uh, I think now you should, yeah, now you okay. should pull down your pants and show me yours. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I thought about this. And I had a long list of, uh, of movies. And there were some of those movies that went into the category of movies I just love, but that are, they're terrible. And that's, there's a reason why they're lesser known, but I love them. Then there's the movies that, um, that once you really kind of go back and look like older movies and I look and I'm like, ah, that wasn't, it's lesser known now, but it actually did have a following when it came out. It did, you know, make some money and stuff. So I kind of disqualified that. Um, but I, I thought of movies that if somebody listening to this really did go and see would really like it. Cause like if you, I don't know if we said this off air or on air, but if you think about like streets of fire or Eddie and the cruisers or like any of these movies that, that I really love, if you go back and watch them, like if somebody would listen to this and went back and watched it, they'd be fucking pissed that we're, they're like, you just wasted my time with William Defoe in, in a leather, uh, <laughs> <laughs> spandex suit. Um, but this is a movie that I saw when I was a kid. And it psychologically stuck with me. And I would put it in the uh I would put it in the category of Red Dawn because it was okay. it was savage and survival in a way, but it, it had to do with kids. And I'm, it, I'm I'm already guessing it's the Australian movie. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yep. you're right. And the reason that I talk about this movie a lot in the podcast, because I think I want people to see it, you know, it's kind of like it, it feels like a Stephen King novel, but it's actually based on a true new, uh, true story. But it's about these escaped convicts that, um, and they're in, way in the outback, and they, uh, they end up kidnapping a classroom full of kids. With a and what is and the name is, of this movie? It's called Fortress. Fortress. It's called Fortress. Rachel Ward. Oh, my who, God, Rachel Ward. Oh, and th by the way, Dude. this is the first time I've ever seen Rachel Ward, and there's a scene where they have to swim in the, in the caves to get, have you seen this movie? Yeah. I, I have. I have seen this movie. Do you remember when she has to get down and, and I don't, yeah, you know, and I was like, I was like, I, I, I'm in love with her. Yeah. Ahead, oh, yeah. Go. No, and, and you are right to be so. But this was the first time I saw her, and I remember as it really gripped me as a kid because it's kind of one of your worst fears, you know, being in class, being in that butt, and these guys show up in their mask. Like, I remember one mask was like Santa Claus, but with the eyes cut out, so it was like dark, pitless eyes. And so it was like a contrast between friendly, fun masks that represent good things, but it was like evil and demented in some way. And, uh, and you never see their faces and they kidnap these people and you never see these faces. And Rachel Ward, like basically has to protect these kids and fend off these guys and also protect herself because obviously she's a beautiful woman. And, and it was just such a vulnerable feeling of like, holy shit, like there's these three grown psychopaths with guns and she is alone and has to take care of like 12 kids. And the shit that they go through in this movie, all of the different, they escape at some point and they find them. And when they escape, it's like a bitter chase and like, and, and it's, it's insane. And one of the kids gets shot and it's, it's really tragic. But like Red Dawn, the kids find their strength yeah. and they find their savagery and they fucking turn on these motherfuckers. <laughs> And it doesn't go well for the for the mass men, and and it's such a really uh, uh, it's like an anomaly for for at that t my age and seeing that movie and being like holy shit, and so that movie's always stuck with me, and it's a movie I think about, and I think it's a movie like worth watching, and it sounds weird, it sounds weird, but I think it's like a great movie for kids. <laughs> I mean, it's not <laughs> like meaning like obviously you would have to be older, like you know uh, teenagers, but like it's like to me like Red Dawn is a great it's like so if i when i was a kid i watched kid move kid movies and i didn't really like them if the stakes weren't high if there wasn't edge if there wasn't an edge to them i wasn't that into it 
But if you show me Red Dawn, which is a kid movie with real, with adult stakes and real savagery, I was fascinated with it. Because, I mean, if you watch Red Dawn, I would say that that movie targets, you know, male 10 and 11 year olds, wouldn't you say? Or, or you Red know. Dawn? Yeah. No, Red Dawn is, is teenagers. Red Dawn is like the, the, the 15 to 19 crowd. Well, you know, I had such a, I had such a, an older taste as a kid. Like, yeah. That, now you know, now like, there's, there's the movie, um, Boy Soldiers, which yeah. the, the, the one about the school that gets taken over by yeah. terrorists. Yeah. Um, which I think does target a younger audience. But what's weird about Toy Soldiers is it's R rated, but it's, it's, it's about kids. And I think that's part of why I don't think it did very well. Yeah. Because kids weren't going to see it because it was R rated and adults, it, I mean, when you watch the commercials, it looked like a movie kids. But when so I was, it was, a it was kid, weirdly, it was weirdly targeted. But when I was a kid, that was my strike zone. Like if yeah. it was a movie about kids, but it was fucking savage and had high stakes and adult things, I was in. Like even, uh, even adventures and babysitting, you know, like even yeah. that was, you know, that was fun and it had humor and it was like this fun humor thing. But, you know, as a kid, like there were in the city and they're like, you know, there was some scary shit that went down. Um, so I would say Fortress is my movie came out in 1985. I think it's a fun movie to see. Show it to your kids. And, and it's, and it's Australian <laughs> and it's so, Australian. You know, give, it's Australian. Give the movie. Australian some love. Get the Australian some loves. Yep. I'm going, I'm going four and two movies. This, this go. Crazy. I thought we were doing three each. No, I know, but two of oh. my list are foreign. Movies. Oh, two of them are foreign. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now you, you, you hit me with the next one. Hit me with okay. your best so, shot. So do you Damn want it. underappreciated Jim or do you want insanity? Insanity. Okay. So we've talked about this movie many times. I feel like this is a movie everyone needs to see at least once because it is just insane. It is made by a major director. It has major stars in it. It has tons of money behind it. it is, has this poster on his wall. It is right well now. made. <laughs> it is well produced. It is in places very well acted. And it is the most batshit insane thing you will ever see. It is the Sean Connery epic Zardoz. Because the penis is evil. The gun is good. <laughs> I have a question. What did... Uh, Go forth and kill. Did David Lynch's Dune come out before Zardoz or did Zardoz come out? No, it was out? after. No, Zardoz is, Zardoz is 70s. Okay, I think David Lynch was really inspired by Zardoz. I think, I think everyone who has seen Zardoz has post-traumatic stress from having watched Zardoz, and it <laughs> fucks with your head. And I'm sure David Lynch watched Zardoz. Zardoz is living rent-free in his head like it lives <laughs> rent-free in my head. <laughs> how, did, uh, how did that movie come to you? Okay, so this was one of those things where like, uh, I'm hanging out at a friend's house. We're looking for something to watch. And he's like, oh, uh, here's a movie. It's got, it's a sci-fi, you know, and this is back in the period when anything that was sci-fi, I would watch it. Didn't matter. Like, and, and I watched a lot of bad sci-fi because of that, but he's like, oh, here's one. And you know, you have the TV guide and remember it would tell you the, the genre in the little thing. And he goes, oh, here's one that's coming on at like eight and it's sci-fi and it's got Sean Connery in it. And of course, you know, I mean, at this point I had seen Highlander, I had seen Outland. I was down for some Sean Connery sci-fi, right? I was ready for that. I was down for it. So we put it on and it starts out kind of, it's weird, but it's like cool weird. Cause it's got like these, these like barbarian dudes roaming the wasteland on horses with rifles. And then this weird stone head comes and like spews out guns and ammunition for them. And it's telling them to go forth and kill. And, and now it's Sean Connery riding on his horse with his gun, murdering people in the wasteland. And you're like, oh, cool. I'm, this is, I, it's weird. And it's, it's got a 70s vibe to it, but okay. And then there's a moment where he, where it switches, where he hides in the big stone head because he wants to see where it comes from. And he goes back to the place where it comes from. And from that moment on, it is just like John Borman is the director. It's like Borman dropped some acid. Wait, was it Borman? It was John Borman. I thought it was uh, Time Bandits guy. No, no, it's not Gilliam. It's Borman. Oh. John Borman. The same guy who did Excalibur. The guy that did great, Deliverance. One of the great movies, yes. John Borman did Zardoz. You know, that makes sense because Deliverance has this kind of 
otherworldly weirdness that it like it's like this gothic deep south yeah but it's so hyper real hyper real yep. it's hyper real but it has this like i mean what ha- like what happened in that baby is just like where the fuck did that come from? Like, why? Right. Wait, couldn't they just be bad we, guys? We know what you <laughs> Southerners are up to. We know. Like, can't they just fucking kill them? Like, what, no, what is that no, no, all no, about? No, 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 not with John Borman. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Even though that was a James Dickey novel, so it happened in the novel, but I think Borman was like, oh, this is something I can work with. <laughs> Borman did have a weird repeating theme of incredibly uncomfortable sexual violence. Or because Zardoz has a lot of that, so so Zardoz, when it, it there's this mid not it's not even mid movie it's like fairly early in the movie when the Sean Connery character climbs into the big stone head and rides it back to the place where it originates from, and we discover that it is coming from this like futuristic society where nobody ever grows old, nobody ever dies, and they are sending this thing out and commanding the wasteland people to kill each other. And Sean Connery becomes sort of the fly in the ointment. He's the outland barbarian who's now been dropped into the perfect city of immortals where nothing ever goes wrong. There's no violence, all that. And they're fascinated by him because he's a barbarian. He's not like them. And so they keep him alive. They, they let him run around in the city and, and, you know, everybody's fascinated. So they all want to talk to him and winds up destroying their, society just by being what he is and like you just you discover like where the zardoz things come from you discover the history of this world you discover the past the lore of this thing but but let me put it this way is there's two important aspects of this that everybody should know one this is the only movie where the costumer was john borman's wife and i and there's a reason why it's the only movie she was ever the costumer for Ty, let me ask you a question um because the costumes are insane. So uh, when there is that moment where <clears throat> you go for a fitting, you've tried a couple of different looks, and they're yeah. like, Let, let's go to the director, let's do this, and we do that. And then you show up in the trailer, and you're like, oh, they chose this one. Okay, and you put it on and everything, and go, yeah. <laughs> what was the day like when Sean Connery walked in that trailer, and his right. outfit was hanging in the closet? Now, now I'm, sure, I'm sure Joseph <laughs> is going to put a picture of this up, but, but for, for the people not seeing a picture, picture this. It's Sean Connery in all his like six foot three hairy chested glory wearing thigh high leather boots, a red banana hammock and uh, suspenders for the banana hammock that are also bullet holders. It, but the uh, suspenders, this, there's no shirt underneath and the suspenders no. go like to his belly button. <laughs> like it's like open to his belly button. And by the way. Sean Connery was not a shave the balls kind of a guy. <laughs> like no. He had pubes and shit hanging out of his banana hammock. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, dude, clean up a little bit. Before no, no. <laughs> this was before the Brazilian. This yeah, is this pre-Brazilian. Was before the Brazilian. Yeah, this is before but, the Brazilian. But it, it's, it's the most insane costume ever. I and know. I, I, I can understand how they got Connery to do the movie. You know, there's is Borman, and he's probably Borman. got a lot of money. Yeah. I don't know how the fuck they talked him into wearing that outfit. Yeah. I don't know how yeah. the fuck they got I think Sean every, Connery. I think the epitome of manliness. I think everybody was incredibly high. I think every, it was the seventies. Everybody's dropping acid on that set. It, that's the only thing that makes sense to me. The only thing that makes sense to me is that everybody is super high on acid the entire time. And then a year later, they realize that this is what they've made. And they all just kind of like, don't talk about it. Like, or like, it's like that thing. You know, remember, you remember, you know, when you like wake up after a really long bender where you like yeah. you went out with the boys and you were at the bar all night and you lost like six hours of time yeah and you and wake up the next day hanging out of your ass and, and you're just like, kind of yeah. yeah and you're just kind of uh i wonder what happened me? last night yeah this uh, this movie is <laughs> is the movie version of that night i bet you i or it's like you're making a movie with all your friends and you're like let's see how fucked up we can make this like let's see like if they would still watch they could buy it let's see like when we do friendship <laughs> basement we'll be like like how, how fucked up can friendship like, basement you know be? What, like <laughs> what we'll do for friendship basement is one of us will wear the Sean Connery Xanador outfit, <laughs> but just never address it. <laughs> yeah. Just never like go through the whole fucking movie and just never like discuss it or bring it up. Or um, maybe not if, one of us, but like somebody in the if movie. If you're in the costume, you're going to have to grow your ball hair up. <laughs> no, or we have, 
in the movie, we'll just have a, an actor that wears it and then is kind of like uh, Mike Myers in Halloween where it'll just kind of pop up in the background and then kind of fade into <laughs> the they're bush. Like, they're like and lurking. Yeah, just lurking. Like dude like, lurking just, in the background. <laughs> but you never know, yeah, just lurking. That's what we're going to do. That's a great Okay. So anyway, Stardust is my pick. I think I think this <laughs> level of insanity needs to be viewed. If if you are a person who partakes of mind altering substances, not that I encourage or discourage that, whatever you do, you do. But um, if you're a person who partakes, probably a good time to take your substance of choice before you sit down to watch this movie. It will help you get through it. But I, it's it is something everybody should experience at least once. All right, my next pick is a movie. I just think it's a fantastic fucking movie. I I really enjoy it. I try I watch it every now and then. Um and it's a movie that like I want to talk to, you know, Ty, you've probably heard of it, but it's a movie that um when I want to talk about like hey, you guys seen this movie in 9 times out of 10, they they don't know what I'm talking about, they haven't seen it, but it's a French movie called The Prophet. Oh, it I know The Prophet. Yeah. I knew you would probably know it, but it yeah, comes yeah, out yeah. it came out in 2009. Uh, it's about a guy who gets who's basically uh, it, it, think of Al Pacino and Scarface, like from the lowest of the low that had to crawl his way. Um, and he ends up, you know, it's a, it's a kid who you could tell has had a lot of hardship. He's poor and uh, he gets, he gets thrown into prison, this French prison. And it's about his journey of like be, being the lowest guy on the totem pole and through resilience and being a survivor and just climbing, he climbs his way up to the top of the power structure within the prison. And it's such a, it's so smartly executed and it's such a pleasure and so much fun to watch him climb up this thing and him, and him be so underestimated and so spat upon and so yeah. shit on. And at the end, he fucking gets everybody back. Great movie. Yeah, that, that is an interesting one. And there's, there's been other movies that tried to do that. I recently did you see the, did you see it, Joseph the Prophet? No, I have not. Uh, you've mentioned it once before, so I need to add that to my list to watch. I do. I definitely like foreign films as well. You would like it. It's, it's they, very Shakespearean. They, there's an American version they did a couple of years ago called Shot Caller, which had um, a Nikolai uh, Kosterwaldo, the the guy who played Jamie uh, Lannister, and it's trying to do that same story. And doesn't quite work. Wait, is he the is he the guy? He's the guy. Yeah, it wouldn't he, work with him. He looks like a goddamn Disney knight. Well, but but they, they do the version where he's he's like the the nice family man who gets oh oh that's interesting gets thrown in jail and doesn't understand the rules in prison and gets taken advantage of because he doesn't understand how it works and winds up having to like find a way to survive in prison and becomes a, a villain in the process of finding a way to survive in prison. Did it work? Did the, does the movie work? Uh, it, not really. I think he's, I think he's good. I think, uh, there are some other performances in it that are good. Did um, he have a, did he have a special talent? Like, like Walter White and breaking bad? Like, did, was there something that he did on the outside? Was there no, an intelligence? No, it's not oh, okay. that kind of thing. It's, okay. it's just, he, it's him. That that's the, the one I'm talking about. The story is, is, a person who will compromise everything that they believe in to find a way to survive. And yeah. so they do survive, but they are not the person they started out as they're totally compromised. Well, then he, then that guy, it sounds like they're biting that Tom Selleck movie. You remember that? They are. The, yep. Yeah, yeah. That's the other one I was thinking of the, uh, yeah. an innocent man. Uh, yeah. Sorry. What, who did I say? Yeah. That I just said just now the Tom Selleck movie. Yeah. yeah an Tom innocent Selleck. Man. Yeah. Um, an innocent man. Uh okay. What's your what's the what's the third baby? Hit me with your last shot. Da -da -da. That sounds kind of gross though, right? It last is a little gross. Shot. Not in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Go. Oh. Um, Thank God nobody listens to this. No, no, because you would you would definitely be canceled by now if anybody <laughs> listened to this. You would yeah. already be in actor jail. I wouldn't be canceled. You would be absolutely be canceled. I'm I'm a I'm a woke street. Anyway, go ahead. What's, what's um, the, so this is a movie that got a little press when it came out. I think it was well received by critics, but very few people saw it. And I let me preface this by saying that this is the movie that began my crush on Aubrey Plaza. I loved her in Parks and Rec. I think she's great in that. I liked her in all the other stuff, but 
I watched this movie and I fell in love with Aubrey Plaza. It's called Safety Not Guaranteed. It is about a girl who's looking for a job. Aubrey Plaza is looking for a job. She reads in the newspaper that a guy needs help with his experiments. And the line at the bottom of the ad is safety not guaranteed. And so she goes because she's desperate. And it is about a guy. The story is about a guy who is trying to invent a time machine. And she's going to be his assistant. And it sounds like it's sci-fi, but it's not really like it has a sci-fi premise, but it doesn't play like a sci-fi movie. It plays like a weird romance between these two weirdos. So he's a weirdo because he thinks he can invent time travel. She's a weirdo. And they just work together. They wind up working together. And this weird kind of sweet romance blooms between the two of them in the background of this guy trying to invent time travel. It's a lovely little movie. It's, it's a small movie. It's, it's, low budget it's it's, you know it's it's definitely an indie thing but the performances are worth watching it for and if you have any affection for aubrey plaza which i think most people do this is a great movie to watch her in she's fantastic in it she's hey i'm about to disappoint you buddy aubrey was here and she left about a week before you got here oh really yeah she was here for Almost three months. She was doing the uh, Francis Coppola movie. Oh, yeah. Here. Yep. And um, she was right by where you were staying. Well, if, if you talk to her, let her know that I'm a big fan. Yeah. We'll have her on the show. She'll talk yeah. about safe, safety's not. Oh, not I would guaranteed. love to talk about safety not guaranteed with her. Uh, so is this a recent movie? Um, no, it's about 10 years old, I think. I, I'm not sure. Exa- Joseph, what's the exact release date on that how, did, was, how did you eat 2012 was it like a, so it is about you, 10 years old did you stumble upon it no i so i read a review of it and i was intrigued by the review that you know is it, it it laid out the premise you know the guy trying to invent time travel hires this assistant she thinks it's all bullshit so that's part of the plot is that the aubrey plaza character thinks that it's all bullshit like she doesn't think he's actually inventing time travel but she's willing to take his money right because she needs a job and so it is, it is this skeptic who doesn't think he's actually doing the thing that he says he's doing and the two of them together and this growing relationship between the two of them. And I mean, I'm not going to give away all the, all the plot twists and stuff, but um, yeah, it's just a lovely movie. And, and not a, every time I mention it, you know, when, cause Aubrey Plaza has blown up, she's huge now, right? She's like, a, she's a megastar now. And every time people talk about Aubrey Plaza, I'll bring up safety, not guaranteed. And nobody has seen it. Like nobody I ever talked to has seen this movie. So have you ever seen time crimes? Yes. What do you think of I actually considered time crimes as one of my three because, but I think, but I think it actually has been seen by a lot of people, just not a lot of people in America. So here's some of my runner ups. Um, Time crimes would be a runner up for me too. And uh, primer. I wanted to kind of go primer. I I wanted, I wanted to go, I wanted to get some science fiction in there because yeah. our uh, massive fan base is uh, they, lean, they lean they lean sci-fi. Yeah. And so I thought, I thought really hard about Primer. Do you think Primer is Primer well known or not? I don't know. Is it qualified? No, Primer Primer is res- well respected and the people who have seen it are very impressed by it in general. Mm-hmm. Not a lot of people have seen it. It didn't get a wide release. I really enjoyed Primer. So if you're listening yeah. to this, this is definitely something to check out, Primer, because uh, and to me, it, it's the most interesting. So a lot of movies with time travel in it, it's kind of like time travel is a device that kind of serves the plot and however yeah. you need time travel to serve the plot. And time, and it's, time travel is really something you can't nail down. The logic of it is Yeah, never the rules really of time travel are whatever the plot needs the rules Whatever the plot be. is. This is the first movie where the movie is about time travel. <laughs> And then you're like, well, that kind of, you know, makes sense of like how time travel could work. And it's so there, fascinating. It's so there interesting. There are videos where they break down exactly what is happening in the movie. And oh, it, takes, I, it takes longer to explain what's happening in the movie than it takes to watch the movie. <laughs> dude, I had to draw out on a piece of paper. Like I yeah. had to be like, okay, this is there and they came this and they came that, that to figure out that movie. By the way, it's yep. not an easy movie to follow, but if you pay attention, it's really rewarding. Yeah, um, agreed. What ha- I wonder what happened to that guy. Why is he not making more movies? I wonder. I don't know. I don't know. Because it's kind of a brilliantly 
done written thing. Yeah. Uh, the other, the if if I could have one more, also ran, um, and this is one we we really wanted. We're trying to put together where we can talk to this director, but a movie called The Void, which starts yeah. out as Assault on Precinct Thirteen, then turns into Cronenberg, then turns into Clive Barker, and somehow every time it changes genres, you're just there with it and. It always feels like a cohesive movie, even though it's three different genres of movie. Yeah, I, I, I'm a big fan of The Void. So I, I would say Primer is my choice, but I, I was conflicted because my, I have a diehard for my lesser known gems. Yeah. So you know how uh, Die Hard always occupies the zero spot, and we always know that yep. Die Hard is, is the best. I actually think uh, that Die Hard is probably the best lesser known gem. I don't know how we're going to fit that. It's one square. of the most watched movies of all time. I don't know how you're going <laughs> to. That's what I'm saying. How unknown. do we how do we fit that square into a round hole? I don't know, but <laughs> I just know it is. Our you and I, our favorite movie. It's one of the movies that I love. I think we even did a podcast on it. But when I talk to a lot of, even my movie friends, I don't know why, when I talk to them about this movie, they, they've never seen it, they never heard of it, it was a mainstream director that directed it, um, is The 13th Warrior. Oh, yeah. And it, 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 it did not do well at the theater. It didn't do well at the theater, but even in like VHS, even in Second Life, right? And I do yeah. not understand it. I just think it's such a kick-ass movie. And when I tell friends of mine, and I, you, it's, it's a very specific person that would like this movie, but whenever I tell friends of mine that I think would like to go see it, they're always like, God damn, that movie's badass. How did I not know right. about this movie? Um, but that's, it was you know, very strangely marketed. Like the, I, remember, I remember the trailers for it did not do it any favors. And I think, too, because the lure of the, uh, the Sin Eaters and it's based off a Michael Crichton book called The Eaters of the Dead. And so the, a, a real thing that they think happened uh, is that some of those early like Norse tribes, uh, Scandinavian tribes, there's like all these stories and historical like uh, things, uh, documents that come up about them being tormented by these people that weren't really human, all human. And what Michael Crichton's thesis is, the thesis in the book is, uh, there was a crossover between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals, and it wasn't like there was one race of human beings, and then there was another race of humans, and there was another. No, no, they, they collided Lots of people against have Neanderthal you. DNA in them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's a real thing. And, yeah, and there, but there was a collision amongst the few, and the Homo sapiens just out perform them they just out they just Darwin their way oh, through. Uh, uh, Homo sapien murdered all of its uh, relatives and competitors and yeah. fucking murder them. Yes. We're we bad. Just murdered them. We come yeah. from a long line of fucking conquerors. We could have been <laughs> Neanderthal, but anyway, so the, the, uh, there is like stories of like Neanderthals would like torment like villages and shit. Like they would come and like steal their kids and eat them. And like all these crazy stories, they were savage They're Cause they're closer to, they're closer to the wild side, you know? And, uh, and that's what he based the book off of. And that's what the, the movie is, is like these things that are coming out are an earlier form of human beings. And that fascinates me, you know? I don't know that I buy his thesis on that, but it yeah. makes for an interesting movie. It makes, it makes for an interesting that, story. It makes yeah. for an interesting movie. And, and I do enjoy 13th Warrior. I, the guy who plays Bulliwiff, the, the Beowulf character, the big yeah. blonde dude. Yeah. That guy is just, like, he just... He only fights in a couple of scenes, but oh, every God. time he walks through a room, you just he's the he's the biggest dick in the room. He's he is he is the most terrifying physical presence. Like if that guy showed up and said, uh, "You have to do what I say," I'd be like, "Yeah, no, obviously I have to do what you say because I do not want to he, be cleaved in half by your sword." <laughs> he has one of the great character introductions of all time in Thirteenth yep. Warrior when he's eating and that guy's trying to position next to him to to yep. assassinate him. And he just yep. puts down his four picks of a sword and cuts him in fucking half. Cuts it's him like, in half. It, it's like Terminator 2, like the guy's a liquid guy. He just cuts <laughs> him in fucking half. The yep. guy drops, and then he goes back and <laughs> continues eating his breakfast. I'm like, I love this movie, and I love this guy, and I'm fucking in. Yep. And I loved how they would uh, they would uh, haze uh, Antonio Banderas. Like, yes. They have his little horse and his pretty just fucking with him. <laughs> and they would like they they thought they would keep calling his horse his dog like get, bring your dog <laughs> you know um, yeah, and they make fun of his sword tell him that uh, the one guy saying oh my daughter would love to use your sword <laughs> <laughs> exactly so uh, yeah I love that movie 
Yeah, and and it's got it's got some great moments in it. One of my favorites is when the redheaded guy picks the fight. Oh yeah, with <laughs> with the big the big uh, bodyguard of the prince. Yeah, and makes it seem like he's losing and he's he's losing. And then when the Beowulf character is like, "Okay, you can go ahead and finish it now," it just instantly it's over. It's just no, like, no, no, no. That's not what happens. So he says. So basically, the 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 game is you have three swords. Yeah, or, or you have three, three shields. shields. Yep. When those shields break, yep. then you have nothing to defend yourself, and then you fight, yep. and then you die. Yep. So he fights, and it's the rope of dope. He allows him to destroy those three shields, and you're like, yeah. and he's tired and like feeble, and he feels he's going to die. Then the guy comes, he does one step, and cuts the guy's head off. No, no, and that's he, exactly what I'm talking about. Why did you but, say I was wrong? Because you said he gave him a look to like, okay, now kill him. The whole plan from the whole thing was, and then at the end he says, any man can judge strength. But basically creating the mystery is what will yep. keep them at bay. And yep. then you're like, that's so bad. So he's like, he was fucking with them the whole time doing the rope dope And then when he came and cut his head off, he, that's more powerful than if he just came and dominated the guy. Yeah. But the, my favorite bit of it is at the end when he says, when the Beowulf character says, we'll miss Angus tonight. We'll miss his sword. Like there's regret that they had to do that. Oh, yeah. There's yeah. the regret that they had to kill that guy because he's like, he's a big, strong guy. He's, he's a sword. Fight. Like we need him. It, it sucks that this idiot prince forced us to kill him to make a point because we need him. And, and you know, I, I, I always liked that turn, uh, that emotional turn in the moment. Yeah, I love that. And you know, um, one of the, the great scenes, the great scenarios that I love is like, so throughout the movie, they're always, they're jolly, they're laughing, they're drinking, they're fucking with each other and but when it's time to get serious you know like they all like get and so the night that the things come right they don't drink that night you know and i it's like you don't really notice that they're not drinking and then when they're laying around and everybody's snoring and everything and you're like oh they're and then you see these things like running on the roof and they did such a great job of building up this mystery of like this, the glow snake that comes out of this, the fog and it kills people. And, and it, these people are fucking terrified and they have been plaguing this town. And so they, they're crawling on the roof and everything. And Antonio Banderas' character, he's fucking scared shitless. And he looks over and they're all acting like they're snoring. Everybody's awake. Their eyes are all open. Their looking, eyes are yep. open. And they're yep. looking and they're tracking them and they're working together and there's not an ounce of fear. When you're yep. fucking like terror, and then it's like, that's so fucking badass. And when those things attack, <laughs> and they're fucking like bears and like crazy shit, and they don't look human, they don't fucking hesitate, dude. It's like throw down time. And they're cutting heads off and running them through. And those yep. fucking uh, trolls are like, ah, and they fucking take off out of there, you know, and, and they take their bodies with them. But then they're, and then they're just like calculating, okay, well, we know they bleed and they know they're, and they're just like, you know, doing the thing. It's like, God damn, this is a man's movie right here. <laughs> it Love is. That and, and that may be part of why it, it didn't entirely find its audience because it's, it's just, it's just testosterone, the movie. Like, Wait, there, there, are like, female, there are some female like characters, so but they don't have a lot to do. Right. Yeah. Yeah. At, and then when the Beowulf's character got sick, he's sick, and he's so fucking sick that you think he can't fight, motherfucker shows up, and, yeah. he, and he takes out the king of the, of the trolls, and then he sits down and plants his fucking sword and then dies. God damn, that's a good movie. That's a good movie. <laughs> it's like a, a, a band of brothers. Um, but anyway... Uh, I hope you guys uh, enjoy that. Um, do we? Did Did you do your three? I did my three. Joseph, do we have like a top three or some fun that you have for us, like questions or anything like that? No, I have none. I I can. So Joseph figures, came man. unprepared as usual. Uh, as, I, you know, as for usual, two fucking weeks we were doing unknown gyms. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, you know, there. It would be so random. It would be impossible to have a top five. For All right, well, like Joseph, this. do you but have any unknown gems? That I you have like? some unknown gems, but the funny thing is, is like it, it gives me pride that some of these that I recommended have now become like well known but i remember after seeing audition the first time oh, i would yeah. tell everybody I have to see it and then uh one of my friends actually said i will never 
take a recommendation from you again after Audition seeing is that. Fucked up, man. <laughs> because she she was she was uh, traumatized by Audition. Yes, um, I I haven't seen it. Is it scary? That movie is fucked up. Yeah, oh, it's, I've a, seen, it's a I've seen it's a trailer Japanese a few horror times. movie. Um, it has no supernatural element. Nothing. So it's not like it's not like ghosts or anything. And it's a horror movie, <sighs> and it's basically just kind of just two characters. Do not watch any trailers, man. Yeah, I w- I've watch watched it. trailers because I've read about oh, okay. it. Okay, okay. I've read about it, and I was like, "Oh, should I watch this movie?" And it never yeah. went out when I was it's, sitting down to watch movies. It's, it's yeah. fucked up. And then another one I always I I like a lesser known gem is is Frailty, you know, oh, directed yeah. by uh, the, I the, love the Bill Paxton. Bill Paxton. Movie. Yeah. I Matthew fucking McConaughey. love Frailty. Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually yeah, pissed great. off. Yeah. I'm, I love that movie, and that was that's a good pick, Joseph. Yeah, it is a good pick. Um, and then probably my bat shit crazy and i will be interested ty if you know this movie okay it's a japanese film called wild zero i do not know Wild. you zero. do not know this movie okay oh. it is the most bat shit it's like um a japanese i don't know a greaser band or something like that um then you have zombies aliens uh just about everything <laughs> um <laughs> okay. it is it is batshit crazy, but it's just it's hilarious as a watch. Okay. Um and uh, I, I, I yeah. wonder if we could have done something like uh for the patrons, uh like what are your like to vote on like what their lesser known gems, like their favorite lesser known gems are or, or well if that, we had a producer kind of piece who the, like was prepared, we could have done something like I know, that. I know. Or <laughs> or that could have been uh that that probably is counterintuitive because if it's lesser known, then probably they wouldn't know about it. Everybody but has their own little Everybody thing. has their own thing. Yeah. yeah. But, but Joseph, I mean, if, if you like crazy, insane Japanese kind of horror stuff, uh-huh. have you seen House? I know. It's it's that okay, is another immediately, one. Immediately the first chance you get, go watch House. Go watch House. It's okay. It is it is Japanese horror insanity. Insanity. I would and don't don't watch trailers don't don't okay. read reviews just go watch it it just, will just it, you it. will never expect anything that happens in that movie it'll <laughs> be okay. 90 minutes of what the fuck um all right guys thank you guys for hanging out we uh we love you and uh and I wish we got to hear your lesser known gems but like always Joseph's not prepared but that's okay we forgive him for it we'll do another and, one uh, of these where we let the patrons give us some suggestions yeah yeah um no we're kidding Joseph you're doing amazing uh <laughs> Thank you, guys. Please like and subscribe, and uh, talk to you soon. Say goodbye, Wes. Oh, say goodbye, Ty. Goodbye, Ty.